Hey everyone, Simon here with Top Tennis Training and in this video I want to show you how to deal with those low balls in tennis. Now often when we're playing someone who likes to slice a lot or if someone's playing with an eastern forehand grip or even a continental forehand grip and they kind of guide that ball, the ball can end up bouncing on your side and then skidding through, especially if you're playing on a court like grass or on a faster surface like carpet courts or artificial grass. Now dealing with these type of balls is a nightmare, especially if you don't know how to actually handle those type of balls and give yourself the best chance to actually get that back in and put it in an awkward position for the player on the other side. Now often when we play against someone who likes to slice the ball a lot, it might not look like the ball has much pace, so it's deceiving. It's almost as if it's floating, but then after the bounce, that's when it skids and comes through quite low. So the first step in dealing with these type of balls is knowing what to do with that type of shot. If you receive one of those low balls and you go for an aggressive flat shot, even trying to hit a winner off it, you're putting yourself at high risk of making an error. So you're playing low percentage tennis when you go aggressive on those low balls. So where should we aim this type of shot and what should your tactical intention be when you're dealing with a low ball? Hey guys, Alex here. And this part of the video has been sponsored by Tennis Clash, the new tennis game that has given me a lot of fun over the last couple of weeks. To try out the game, all you have to do is click our special link in the description below to support the channel and we'll give you 200 gems and 500 gold as a bonus. Now inside the game you have the practice mode and you have the tour mode. Of course for me it's all about tournaments where I can compete against other players all over the world in all the different leagues that they have available and all in real time. Go, go, go. As you win matches, your player grows in experience and improves their attributes. You also receive prize money that you can use towards buying new equipment to help you win more. This includes getting a new tennis racket, new shoes, new strings, new grips, and so on. You can also customize the way your character looks. The game is so addictive, I find it tough to put it down. But don't take my word for it, download the game for yourself. All you have to do is go to the description under the video, click our special link, support the channel and for that you'll receive 200 gems and 500 gold to get you started. I'll see you on court. Now if we think about the tennis court, the high percentage tennis from the baseline is normally cross court. Now this is because the net is the lowest in the middle. By going cross court you're going over the lowest part of the net but also by hitting cross court, you have the most amount of space to miss by. So if I hit it down the line and I hit the ball slightly late, the ball is gonna go into a tram line or even worse. If I hit the ball cross court and I hit the ball slightly late, I'm still gonna hit it into the middle of the court. And that's still an okay tactic when dealing with these low balls. The second step in dealing with these low balls is knowing which type of shot you should hit to actually get that ball back in the court. Now you can hit flat, you can hit slice, or you can hit aggressive topspin. So you can use all three options, but if you choose to hit the ball quite flat, you'll have to guide the ball and almost take a bit of pace off just to get the ball back in the court. If the ball's low and I'm hitting it flat and aggressive, the ball is going to most likely go into the net or go long because it doesn't have that arc on the ball that we need to get it over the net and dipping in before the lines. Now if you choose to drive the ball with topspin, this will allow you to be very aggressive with the racket head speed during that contact zone. This will allow you to go for more power but still maintain that high percentage and this is because of that arc. We want the ball to go up off our strings, we want the ball to lift up over the net so we know that we're not going to hit the net and then we want the ball to dip in before the lines. Mm. 
and the only way to do this successfully time and time again is hitting aggressive topspin. Now we'll get more into the technical side of hitting those aggressive topspin shots in the next step. But for now, if you're hitting with that topspin, it will give you the chance to be more aggressive, it will give you the chance to hit that higher net clearance. And if you choose to slice the ball, this is also a great way with dealing with those low balls. Because of the angle of the strings, it allows us to then pick the ball up and also impart our own slice, that underspin, so that when the ball bounces on the opponent's side, it stays low and makes it much harder for my opponent to attack me on the next shot. If they're dealing with a ball that's down by their ankles, now for them, it's almost like the shot we've just dealt with. We're turning that defensive shot that we've just hit into a neutral or even aggressive shot. So we're changing the dynamics of that point simply by hitting that slice. And the third step in dealing with these low balls is the execution. So the first step to executing it well is getting down low and maintaining that wide athletic stance and maintaining that low center of gravity. This will help you to get under the ball, this will help you to be balanced, and this will help you to deal with those low balls. Now notice in this clip how low Alex gets with his body. Look at the knee bend right here. Now this is crucial when handling a slice. Now as we get to the ball, we want to maintain that low center of gravity, and this could be an open stance. So if I'm gonna hit an open stance forehand, I wanna make sure that I'm getting down almost in that lunge position on my right leg if I'm a right-handed player. So I wanna be in that position here, so that when the ball does come through, I can easily still get under the ball with my racket face, which is crucial if I want to have that aggressive topspin. So I'm getting to the ball early, I'm getting behind the bounce so that I can deal with a bad bounce, I can deal with a fast ball if it's skidding through. So I'm getting behind the bounce and I'm getting there as quickly as possible. What you don't want to be doing is seeing a ball that's coming through and skidding and taking your time and then rushing at the last second. You want to get behind the ball flight so that if the ball does bounce badly or it comes through extremely quick, you're ready to adapt and you're ready to still hit that shot. So we're getting there quick, we're staying low, we're having that wide athletic base when we're in that position, and we're making sure that we get the rack ahead. If we're going to drive that shot, we're making sure that we don't have a massive swing. There's no point in having a huge swing if you're dealing with a low ball, because for this type of shot, the main intention should be that you're getting your rack ahead down below the ball level. This might mean that if the ball is down by my knee, my racket is down here, so that when I'm actually making contact, I'm coming up from that low to high position with the rack ahead. So it's getting the rack ahead completely below the ball level so that when I'm actually making contact, I'm brushing up. And if you're hitting the ball cross court, a great way for you to think about this is imagine the ball as a clock. So we have 12 o'clock and we have six o'clock on the bottom. If I'm going cross court with my forehand, I'll hit the ball from five o'clock to 11 o'clock. So across the ball and up the ball. This will make sure that I hit the ball cross court, but also give it that nice arc that we need to clear the net and, and get the ball dipping into the court. So brushing the ball from five to 11 o'clock, if you're going cross court, if you're going down the middle or down the line, you can then hit from six o'clock to 12 o'clock. This is the same thing on your backhand. It doesn't matter if you're one-handed or two-handed backhand player. You make sure that you get down below that ball so that you can actually drop the rack ahead and then brush up at the point of contact. If I'm hitting my backhand cross court, I'll be going from seven to one o'clock. And if I'm hitting my backhand into the middle or down the line, I'll be going from six to 12 once again. If I want to slice that ball, I have to open my strings much more than on a normal slice. So if I have a normal slice around shoulder level, I might have my strings quite flat towards the net because I can be aggressive on that slice and still clear the net. But on those lower balls, I have to really open up the string bed 
and almost imagine I'm hitting that slice with my strings fully open to the sky because this will allow me to have that underspin so it'll make it much harder for the opponent to deal with but also will help me to clear the net. Now the swing path will change on those lower slices. On a mid-height slice I might be going from high to low with my rack ahead. This is to cut down on the ball and be aggressive. But on those lower slices I'll have to go from either a medium position to a medium position to kind of guide that slice with the strings open or I'll even go from medium to high to lift that ball more. If it's extremely low I'll have to go from a low position with my rack ahead to a medium or low to high. So you won't be using that high to low swing path on a low ball because then you'll net the shot. Now another good way to deal with these low balls is using that open stance and almost doing a lunge to lunge. And this is something you see a lot with the WTA players when they're dealing with a fast low ball. They'll get into that loaded position on the outside leg. So this is your right leg for the forehand. And from here, instead of doing this and lifting up, they'll go from this right leg lunging to left leg lunging. So it's almost like you're going from a right leg lunge to a left leg lunge. So once again, they're getting the racket here, right leg lunge, left leg lunge. This will ensure that they stay low all the way through the contact point and don't lift up too early and lose their balance. The same can be done on the backhand. So I can go from that left leg loaded position to a right leg loaded position. This will ensure that I stay low and have that balance all the way through the shot. So there you have it, how to deal with low balls in tennis. I hope you've enjoyed this video and learned something new. If you have enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and make sure you turn on the notification bell so that YouTube will notify you whenever we release a new video. Share this video with anyone who would benefit from watching it. So someone who hates dealing with those low balls, send this video to them and hopefully they'll learn how to deal with those low balls. This might be your doubles partner or someone in your tennis circle. Signing off, Simon from TTT, all the best and see you soon guys. Stay